In case you were wondering, this is currently the life of a millennial in Venezuela. This is Gianpaolo. He's a 22-year-old Venezuelan. I met him in New York the day he graduated from college. He was returning home to Caracas for one month, and I asked him if I could join him, virtually, to really see what daily life was like inside of Venezuela. A country that was once the richest in Latin America and is now spiraling into chaos in the midst of an economic, humanitarian, and political crisis, mostly caused by the regime of their president, Nicolás Maduro. And this is what happened. I've been here for about a week, and I've been to at least four protests. Like, protesting has become something, a day-to-day -day activity. People go out every day, protest, and go back to your life. Uh, we were walking, protesting to the National Election Congress until the repression started, police shooting tear gas against us, um, actual shots. Marble, metal marbles, violence, as I was saying, has exponentially grown every day since I've been here. You can see how most of the people that are in the front are young people, basically students. Like, your parents are worried because you're you're basically risking your life for something. But you have to, do, it's like a duty, it's like you have it, you know? I lived here for 18 years and I, I'm not throwing it away just because a small group of guys are trying to take my country away. There's no shot. Gianpaolo is definitely not alone. Thousands upon thousands of students have taken to the streets, organizing protests to make their voices heard. Porque el gobierno nos está robando el presente y ahora nos está robando nuestras vidas. Entonces nosotros decidimos cambiar. Nosotros no salimos a protestar porque nos guste recibir plomo o golpes. Nosotros salimos a protestar porque más nunca queremos recibir plomo o golpes. Y ese es el mensaje que nosotros le mandamos a, a, a todo el país y a todo el mundo. Ayúdenos, no nos dejen solos. La comida no se consigue. La gente muere en los hospitales por falta de insumos y porque las condiciones son cada vez más precarias. Even though it's not our, our fault that we're in this mess, it's our responsibility to claim for f our future. People in Venezuela have been protesting against their government for more than 100 days. More than 90 people have been killed by government forces, but that number is constantly rising. Under President Nicolás Maduro, Venezuela has become the worst performing economy in the world. Food is running out and what's left is so expensive that 93% of Venezuelans can't really afford it. So you were telling me you were at the supermarket, so guide me through it, what happened? We stopped at the supermarket to just buy some, you know, some drinks, some coke. We noticed that there was a heavy line because milk, butter, and I think it was soap had arrived in the supermarket. Like you see the, the supermarkets filled with like water, coke, or like fish, chicken, like steak, all the protein, like things you need to eat, you don't see very often. And if you think the supermarkets are bad, wait till you see the pharmacies. According to the Venezuelan Pharmacy Federation, 80% of medications are not available countrywide. Just watch what happens when Gianpaolo and his mom go to the pharmacy to try and get some medicines for his grandmother. So we're at Pharmatodo, which is one of the biggest pharmacy chains here at Caracas. And I just came here to see if we could get some medicines for the house. No, no, I any antibiotic for any infection you have, it was we couldn't find it at the pharmacy. A day after I went to the pharmacy, I actually volunteered to go with the group to bring like resources to one of the public hospitals in the country. First image you get in, it's like a huge pile of just trash accumulated in the entrance. They were had no like no filter on the water. Even in private hospitals, sometimes you have to bring your own needles. Sometimes you have to bring your own supplies for the doctors to treat you. So picture this. Right now in Venezuelan public hospitals, there are about 0 0.9 hospital beds per 1,000 people. That's not even one full bed available for 1,000 people. Patients in need of surgery are at major risk since 61% of surgical materials are damaged, leaving more than 50% of operation rooms closed. 
when you see like public hospitals that are supposedly treated by the government to treat the vast majority of the population in this state basically describes the care that they put into the population. When Gianpaolo and I spoke, Venezuela's minimum wage was around 65,000 bolivares per month. That's the equivalent of about seven US dollars without food stamps. Not long after our conversation, Maduro raised the minimum wage for the third time this year to 12 bucks a month. But inflation is rising at such a fast rate that these moves are largely meaningless. It is set to reach 1,660% this year. And so when it comes to like basic goods, right? How did you do it? What happens there? There's limited amounts that you can buy for like those products. Like say you're buying flour, you can only buy like two per person. Toilet paper, you cannot buy like a stack of toilet paper, you can buy like three per person or something like that. There's everything is regulated for an amount. And all the products that I saw that was, it's really important to point out, they're very overpriced in when you contrast them to the minimum wage salary here in Venezuela. Minimum wage, I think it is, it's 60,000 believers. A basic product like deodorant was priced at 15,000. That leaves you with 45,000 to provide for your family. A 2016 study showed that because of the food shortage, 75% of Venezuelans have lost an average of 19 pounds. And because of inflation, even fast food restaurants are unaffordable. I wanted to eat a Big Mac. I wanted to go to McDonald's. I'm a fan. So I got there. First impression I got, the prices were absolutely absurd. Can I ask Big Mac with Papa? 14, so you would say, if I'm taking my whole family, a family of four, right? I already spent 60,000 believers in it. So I spent all my salary without the food stamps in one trip to McDonald's. How are you supposed to maintain yourself at that rate? This is a reality for everyday Venezuelans, lack of food or luxury fast food. And by the way, all this is nowhere to be found on Venezuela's mainstream media. Socialist government in Venezuela has been restricting media coverage since Chavez, but it got way worse. In 2014, when Venezuela's crisis began, their National Telecommunication Commission declared that any coverage of violent events was punishable. I'm just coming back from today's protest. I just found out through Twitter that there were some people wounded at today's protests. Uh, and let's see if some of the national channels are reporting the activities from today. Absolutely nothing here. Televen. Nothing. Us Venezuelans are forced to get our information through social media, and that's how some initiatives like El Bus TV has been born here in Caracas. Censorship is so bad that a group of volunteers started El Bus TV. They go on public buses, read out the news, and talk about the violence that is actually happening around the country. The audience is the commuters, who might not be seeing any of this on social media. Gianpaolo tagged along with El Bus TV team to see it all happen. Salud. El 60%, es decir, más de la mitad de los hogares venezolanos, alguien ha dejado de comer para que otro coma. Y en noticias finales, Van 74 muertos durante 81 días de protestas en contra del gobierno de Nicolás Maduro. Las principales peticiones de quienes protestan son permitir la entrada de donaciones de medicinas y alimentos y elecciones generales este año. Y mientras tanto, en Caracas, las panaderías continúan sin pan. The crisis has resulted in massive insecurity around the country. As fast cash is needed, robberies and kidnappings for ransom are becoming more and more common. In fact, during his time there, Gianpaolo's cousin was a victim of kidnapping. Uh, yesterday at 8 in the morning, my cousin got kidnapped and uh, it's 5 p.m. right now. He just got home, so I'm going to pay him a visit so he can explain us more about his experience. Thankfully, Gianpaolo's cousin was released safe and sound after a ransom was paid. Just among his friends and family circle, Gianpaolo knows at least 30 people who have been kidnapped. Police rarely do anything on these cases. That's why statistics show that 91% of Venezuelans don't really believe in law and order. It's basically a problem that's aligned with the poverty one because people need money to feed their families and the jobs that they're working are not giving them 
enough money to sustain their families. So they go into this period of just robbing people, kidnapping, even though they don't want to, is their only way out of this mess that they're into. And so overall, do Venezuelans mostly blame Nicolas Maduro for all this mess? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of players in the equation. I would say the main, main aspect would be the government. Cuba's a big player in there. When Chavez came in, he admired Fidel Castro. So a lot of the movements that have gone through Venezuela are like mirrored in what happened in Cuba. The main difference is that we're the richest country in oil in the world, something Cuba does not have. So we shouldn't be in the same position that a country that is not as benefited in natural resources as we are is at the moment. What's your biggest takeaway from your month back home in Caracas? What are your feelings? So I think I learned a whole lot after a month of just going out to protests. There's like this big feeling of hope that we're really close on turning this thing around. I think that's the main, one of my main reasons of doing this activity with you was like trying to show, like raise awareness of what's happening. And that's where us as a generation come in and we're like entitled to build the future that we fought for. Two weeks after Jean Paolo told me that, Maduro claims victory in what many are calling a sham election. He's going to consolidate his power and change the constitution by replacing the current National Constituent Assembly with members who are loyal to him. Many Venezuelans and leaders around the world fear for Venezuela's democracy. I went back to check in with Jean Paolo and see how his loved ones back in Caracas are feeling. To a lot of people, it was an emotional blow because Deep in their heart, they thought about they thought about the possibility of this election not going through because it was not the people's will and it was the government just implementing it without asking anyone. Most of the people I've discussed it with, they don't think about it as a defeat. It's a way for the government to show their true colors as a full blow dictatorship to society and to the international eye. As many people believe, and I personally believe, every day we're getting closer and closer to making history and regaining the future that these people are trying to take from us. And now, the whole world will be watching.